everybody and welcome to your next C++ Made Easy HD tutorial. Uh, so in this tutorial we're going to be learning about polymorphism. Now polymorphism is, uh, uh, it can be seen as really complicated just like encapsulation and inheritance can be. Uh, but I'm assuming that you grasp the last two topics and uh, polymorphism doesn't really need to be hard. So I will, exp I will explain it in very easy terms. Uh, so the word polymorphism means um, something taking different shapes, right? And uh, I'll show you how we handle it in our programs. Now, although you've uh, learned about inheritance, capsulation, and, and you will be learning about polymorphism in this tutorial, you might not see the significance of polymorphism or why we need it or how to use it. Um, and I'll try to get, give examples on when to use it and how to use it. Uh, but um, it's you will get it with practice, right? You'll understand this role with practice. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make an entity class, and we're gonna have a protected property, and it's gonna be called attack power. Okay, and we're gonna have a public property, and it's gonna be s called set attack power. It's gonna take one parameter called value. And we'll set attack power equal to value. Simple enough. So now we're just gonna make one uh, one derived class, and we're gonna derive uh, is, we're, the parent class is gonna be entity, and in here we're gonna put public attack. We're gonna put player attack put attack power and end L. So that is our function right here. So one thing that I failed to explain the last tutorial, which will really help us in this tutorial now, uh, is that um, when it comes to object-oriented programming, they call it object-oriented programming is because any instance of a class is considered an object. Why do we call it an object though? is that classes are supposed to represent real world objects okay so when we look at it this way okay this is the parent class or the base class right and this is the child class or derived class the name is, is in, the names are interchangeable okay so whenever whenever we do colon public entity anything from the entity class is being kind of copied and pasted into the player class into the child classes right so uh if you want to think of it like when a parent has a kid or whatever uh i guess some of the qualities from the the parent get passed on to the child okay so if you want to see this that uh that example so when we do it this way okay the player is an entity okay so whenever we derive whenever we have a derived class when it derives from another class that becomes that type as well okay so the player is also a player type and it is also an entity type okay if we look at it that way okay and you're gonna see uh, how we can use that uh, to use polymorphism to take on different forms but you need to note that even though a player is an entity, an entity isn't a player, right? And this is where the hierarchy kind of comes in. If we look at it in a real world sense, okay? And the word entity means uh, anything that is in existence, right? And, and any object, okay? So it is. it would be an incorrect statement to say an entity is a player. Right, that is incorrect because an entity could be a player, it could be an enemy, it could be a plane, it could be anything, right? So it's incorrect to say an uh, entity is a player. That is an incorrect statement. But it could be a correct statement to say a player is an entity, right? And uh, so uh, that, is, that is basically how in inheritance works, right? So if whenever we you look at inheritance, um, when we're looking at polymorphism and stuff, uh, when you derive from another class, you can look at it this way: a player is an entity, 
but it doesn't work vice versa. A entity is not a player. So if I was to make another class like here, enemy, and say I derived from the player class for whatever reason, right? I could say an enemy is a player, but a player is not an enemy. So you can look at it from that um, perspective, okay? And this is going to be significant what I'm going to show you now. So we're going to make an object or an instance of the player class. And we're going to create a, a pointer for an entity class. And we're going to be pointing to an instance of the player class. Now, why can we do this? Remember, the player is an entity. And sorry, just let me look at the time. Okay. So much like you know if we if we tried to do uh if we made a char uh say test or whatever and we did in test two and we tried to derive from uh we tried to point to a character we would get an error right we can't do that there are two different types but if we look at it this way the player is an entity so therefore the entity can point to a player class Right, but we cannot do it vice versa, right? Because the uh, the uh, entity is not a player. So we we got this right here, and because it's a pointer, then we got to use a pointer symbol. So dash and arrow, and uh, what we're going to do is we can call we're going to call set attack power, and we want to call the attack function from the player class. But if we know we it doesn't exist it won't work we get an error right because the attack function doesn't exist in the entity class but then you're saying wait the entity is pointing to the player class so we should be able to get access to this but it doesn't work like that if we wanted to call this attack function then we would have to call the initial player class and call attack And let's just run this. Uh, it's going to take a while to compile because of the screen recorder. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, but you know what? Yeah, I will pause it and restart it once it's done. Okay, so our the results we got, is, it says player attack 10. So we got the correct results, right? Uh, so let me just close this window. Okay, so uh, we got that we got that all right, right? So, but say uh, l let's say for example that we never uh, let's say we never had this player instance, and we just said it's equal to new player, right? And whenever we call new, we have to call delete. So delete on entity. So if we try to call uh, entity. And we want to call attack we couldn't do so right and therefore we're at a disadvantage right therefore with polymorphism um that's a huge bug or, or a huge disadvantage we have right we really want to be able to access this without having to actually revert to the initial thing that we're pointing to so how do we do this well whenever we are pointing to um something else right we are indeed whenever we call like set attack power we are indeed changing the value of anything in the player class we are doing that but all the methods and such we can only call the methods from the parent class right so what if we want to call the method from the child class uh how do we do so well this is how we do so well if we were to make a, a variable called attack like so and we just said uh, attack. Then uh, it would still, if we if we run this, if we were to compile this and build this and run it. Not sure why it's not building. Okay, okay, now it is. But if we build this and run it, we should we will still get the results. We would get the attack power 10, but it would say, instead of saying player attack, it would just say attack because 
is calling the attack function from uh, from here. So if we look at this result, it just says attack, right? Because it's calling the attack function from the parent class rather than the derived class or from the child class. So how do we call this from the child class? Well, all we would have to do is put virtual void. Just put virtual in front of that and let's run it. And sorry for the slow compile times, but I'll explain for what virtual means in this in this context. So what virtual does is that when it notices a virtual function, it will say, "Okay, this is a virtual method or function, whichever one you want to call it." So let us look in the class the derive or okay. Well, sorry to stop my explanation, but if you notice, it says player attack ten, right? So it indeed called uh, the attack function from the class we're pointing to. So what just happened? It noticed that it says the word virtual in here. So whenever it notices the word virtual, it says, let's look at the child class or the class we're pointing to. And let's see if it has another function under the same name with the same amount of parameters, of course, right? So if it has, if it is the same name with the same amount of parameters, then it says, okay, let's run that function rather than the parent classes function. So without virtual, then it will run this function. But if we add virtual in there, then it will call the function from which, um, which we're pointing to. So that is where uh, polymorphism uh, comes at its best. And there's still more stuff that you can do with the virtual keyword, but I will explain that in the next tutorial talking about abstract classes, right? Uh, but to, to finish off my uh, this tutorial, although it's very long already, to finish off this tutorial, why do we need polymorphism? Why do we need to do this? Why can't I just create something of type player and so on and so forth? Well, look at it this way, okay? For example, say I have um, another, uh, say I have an enemy class, whatever, right? And say I have, I, I want to decide at runtime um, what I'm going to use, whether I'm going to use a player or an enemy. Or say I have a different entity like a human or a c cyborg or whatever, right? Um, so say I have like the players doing a new game or whatever and they want to des decide if they're whether a human or if whether they're a cyborg right now I don't in my class I wouldn't want to do uh, have a human instance and then have a cyborg instance and uh, say I have like 10 different types right and then I have um, whatever I wouldn't want to create all those and then have to do um, a bunch of checks to see which one we use right and then for example say we are a human right then the update method I'd have to do like this I'd have to say if uh, if human uh, like say if type is equal to uh, human then you have to call human dot update whatever and then you have to have an else if to say else if type equals and note this is pseudocode sorry so if you guys are confused right but it's a pseudocode so if i says if type equals to cyborg then cyborg dot update and it will get entirely too long and so you have like 10 20 different types you'd have to keep on doing if and else if statements for doing that right but if we had a a, a parent class like entity then i could do this then I could say in my initialize function or whatever. Uh, so say I have a pointer, or whatever, like that. I could say in my initialize function that if uh, type is equal to human or whatever, then entity equals to a new human. Okay, and then so forth. So now that I said it like this, in my update function, I wouldn't have to. Um, checked for all my if and else if statements all I would have to do is call entity and do a pointer to update and then it will call the update functions for the human class right so I you wouldn't it kind of helps in that whenever you need to do runtime checks or whatever or runtime arguments or whatever it really helps in that sense 
And that's kind of a basic, it's not a broad overview on why you need to do it, but it's a base, it's a basic explanation on why you will need it. So I'm going to end the tutorial there. Sorry for, for it being so long, but uh, I just want to explain it in depth. So thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it and 